By now, you've probably seen Avengers Endgame. If you're one of the 14 people on the planet who hasn't yet, then seriously, what is wrong with you? Like, what are you waiting for? It's quite literally the highest grossing movie of all time. That's like, out of all the movies that have ever existed. Ever. So it shouldn't come as a spoiler that the Avengers managed to pull off their complicated time heist, reverse the snap that eliminated half of all life in the universe, and defeat the mad titan Thanos and his army. Then again, did they really win? You know? Like, was it really a victory? I mean, they definitely won the battle against Thanos, but in the grand scheme of things, did the Avengers actually come out victorious? The answer isn't as simple as a yes or no. You see, they did win, only not in their universe. The victory took place on an alternate timeline. The Avengers lure Thanos into battle, only it's not the Thanos from Infinity War that pulled off the snap. That guy really lost his head. He didn't realize that snapping half the galaxy into oblivion isn't the way to get ahead in life. It's a shame he wasn't more headstrong. That version of Thanos from the main timeline could never be the head of his own army. The Thanos that assembled all of the Infinity Stones and managed to pull off the snap was abruptly taken out at the very beginning of Endgame. Instead, the Thanos that the Avengers lure into a climactic battle was actually from an alternate timeline from 2014. So, in Avengers Infinity War, when Doctor Strange has that mini-seizure and goes into the future to check out 14 million possible outcomes, with only one in which they win, he wasn't actually checking the future, he was checking alternate realities. So what does this mean? I know things can get complicated, as if superheroes and space tyrants wasn't enough to keep a handle on, now we've got time travel and alternate realities tossed into the mix. But essentially, the main timeline Avengers managed to lure 2014 Thanos away from another timeline and defeat him. This means that the timeline he came from is the one that got saved. That is the universe where the snap never actually happened. If Thanos' trajectory ends in 2014, and the events of Infinity War only take place in 2018, it would stand to reason that he never assembles the Infinity Gauntlet and never follows through on his master plan. That timeline has no more Thanos, meaning the events of Infinity War and Endgame never take place. In that alternate universe, the snap never happens, and there are no casualties as a result. Even Tony Stark is still alive and well. So Doctor Strange wasn't looking at ways to reverse the snap or undo what Thanos did. He was looking at ways to save an alternate reality from those events ever happening. That was the one and only way for the Avengers to quote-unquote win. Which proves an interesting point. Thanos was right. He is inevitable. At least, within the universe that he said that in, there's a good chance that the upcoming Doctor Strange sequel deals with this tangled earphone wire mess of a situation. In fact, it's actually called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The multiverse is a complicated thing, and they've really only just glossed over it so far. There's no telling what sort of issues they caused by messing with the past and creating all sorts of alternate timelines. Hopefully that movie mentions the fact that there's a reality somewhere where the snap never even happened and Tony Stark is fine. This could also be a potential workaround if Marvel ever decides to bring back Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man or Chris Evans as Captain America. Their contracts with Disney are finished, but they could always negotiate new ones and be brought back into the fold with this not-so-simple explanation. Perhaps the main MCU villain will require all hands on deck and Doctor Strange will explain how these guys exist in an alternate timeline and then use one of his fancy portals to bring them back to save the day. So if there's a timeline in which Thanos never pulls off the snap, what else would be different there? What would the butterfly effect be like? Thanos and his army from 2014 being defeated would mean that there's no Gamora or Nebula, seeing as how they were still on his side back then. In fact, that would mean there would be no such thing as the Guardians of the Galaxy at all. Peter Quill would never meet Gamora, nor would he meet Rocket, Groot, or Drax for that matter. If you'll recall the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, Ronan the Accuser was on the hunt for an orb that contained the Power Stone, 
because he had worked out a deal with Big Thanos. Ronan was supposed to get him the orb, and in exchange, Thanos would destroy Xandar for him. But if there's no Thanos to speak of, then this deal never gets made, and Ronan never goes on a hunt for said Infinity Stone. Ronan probably goes ahead and goes to war with Xandar regardless, and there's no telling how that turns out. But we know that Peter Quill would never end up holding the Power Stone like he did at the end of the first Guardians movie. And if Peter never holds the stone and survives, then Ego, the living planet from Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, and Peter's father, would never hear about him. In the second Guardians film, Ego seeks out Star-Lord because of the Power Stone situation, and because he needs his son in order to complete his mission of becoming the entire universe. They say you should aim high and have big goals. Well, Ego certainly took this advice to heart. He wanted to be the universe. It would probably take Ego a much longer time to track down his son, but once he did so, he'd probably be able to execute his master plan because Peter wouldn't have the rest of the Guardians beside him to defeat his father and save the universe. Star-Lord would have to go up against his Papa the Living Planet all alone, and would surely lose that matchup. So I guess, in a very roundabout way, if Thanos from 2014 gets defeated, that would mean that Ego eventually takes over the universe. Maybe Thanos knew that all along. There was always a hint of sensibility with this guy. Sure, he was a sadistic tyrant, but something about him was just likable for some reason. Perhaps Thanos wasn't such a bad guy after all, and was actually trying to do the right thing. Whether it was saving the universe from Ego, or maybe he saw an even greater threat and was doing his part to avoid something much, much worse. I don't know, maybe Galactus? It's possible that Thanos knew the Eater of Worlds has a taste for places with more population than it can sustain. Thanos wiping out half the universe may have actually been for the universe, and he was seriously being merciful just like he tried to explain. After all, Galactus would pose a much greater threat, and there's no amount of Spider-Man webs or Iron Man rocket blasts that could stop that guy. Thanos was instead acting proactively to avoid showing up on Galactus's radar, and all of his actions were with the best of intentions in mind. Maybe that's what Doctor Strange went into the future to see. Maybe he wasn't checking on ways that they could beat Thanos, but instead measuring what outcome would pose the largest threat. Perhaps he saw Galactus on the horizon, or someone like Doctor Doom, who would be even more insurmountable and instead chose the safest path based on the long-term outcome. After all, the Infinity Gauntlet held so much power, but in order for the Avengers to come out victorious, Thanos had to have destroyed it in the main timeline. He's the only being in existence with such a singular purpose that only he would use the stones once and then destroy them. Anyone else would have kept that thing to themselves and used it in countless ways. Even the good guys would have abused that power. You think the Avengers wouldn't bring back Tony Stark? or Thor wouldn't use it to put Asgard back together? It would completely throw things out of whack and the entire universe would be off balance if that were the case. No one can be given that much power, no matter how good or bad they are. Thanos is the only individual with enough purpose and self-control to use it one time and then make sure it no longer exists. The snap had to happen in that main timeline in order for him to feel satisfied enough to destroy the glove. The snap was necessary, and subsequently, so was Tony Stark sacrificing himself to reverse it. If none of that happens, and the Infinity Gauntlet still exists, then there's no telling what sort of worse events might have transpired. While all of these hypotheticals are just theories at this point, there's actually a good chance that Marvel addresses these alternate outcomes in their upcoming What If series. The show, which will stream on the new Disney Plus platform, will explore pivotal moments in the MCU and take a look at how things could have played out differently. It'll be interesting to see which storylines they choose to embark on and what sort of alternate outcomes they examine, but there's a good chance that the snap and the whole Infinity War saga will be right near the top of the list. Now that we're dealing with alternate realities and time travel, the possibilities for this series are seemingly limitless. So what are your thoughts? Do you feel like the Avengers actually won in Endgame, or was that kind of a loophole victory? And which storylines are you most excited to see an alternate outcome for in the What If series? Let us know by dropping a comment in the section down below. We'd love to hear from you. 
Before you go, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant to stay up to date on all of our latest and greatest releases. Until next time, bye!